So good morning, everyone. Thank you, Francisco, for being present. Uh, Francisco is presenting GeoScope. And this, this is the third day of the showcases in the match, adventure matchmaking, the infra matchmaking. And thank you, Francisco, for, for accepting our invitation and for being present here. And the stage is yours. Feel free to talk about everything about the, the GeoScope. Dioscope or dioscope? How do you pronounce it? Dioscope, dioscope. Thank you very, very much for the invitation. It is a great honor for me to be here presenting our work and our ideas in dioscope. So if I may, I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, let's see if I can. Okay, I hope you are already seeing my screen, yeah? Yes. So view, okay, it's in presentation mode, okay. So let me just uh, make a brief uh, introduction and introduce my, myself. So my name is Francisco Guayana da Silva. I'm a medical doctor uh, and I'm the chief strategy officer of Dioscope. I will tell you uh, more in detail what we are doing and what our vision is for the healthcare system in Dioscope later. But right now, um, I would like to go and tell you uh, a story. And it's actually the story that led us to create our startup. So uh, more or less four years ago, uh, our CEO, Tomás Pessoa Costa, uh, it's also one colleague of mine, he's also a medical doctor, uh, was preparing to do his uh, specialty access exam. Uh, so this exam or this, uh, this test actually aimed to rank all the medical doctors in Portugal to, uh, to actually then be able to uh, pick and select the specialty they would uh, like to pursue later in their careers. So it was an exam based in one book. It was the Arison book. book. Um, and um, everyone would spend the last year of medical school studying for it. So Tomás uh, was the top performer uh, in Portugal for this exam. He, uh, he scored like 100% like 2020 and yeah and he realized that apart from being very successful in this process of studying he realized that there was a business opportunity for this so why not to teach and give um, some advice to the colleagues that were preparing themselves themselves to do the exam later uh, why uh, why not to provide them with a platform where they could uh, get good tips and coaching from the best performers of the exam from the year before, their colleagues, only one year older than them. So we created like a medical education platform uh, that was digital four years ago. Uh, even before COVID, our decision was to make it digital. So we engaged the best performers of the exam each year to actually give lectures in like this, uh, um, this exam. So it was a, a very su successful uh, endeavor. Uh, the company was like very successful. We started like with a fund of 5,000 euros that we borrowed from our parents. And, it, and we, we started being pro uh, profitable like two or three months after creating the company. So. Um, we like to call ourselves a bootstrap uh, startup because we didn't need any external investment rather than the money we borrowed from our parents in the beginning. So what we really realized was after this was that, okay, all the medical doctors that were, are preparing themselves for this exam organized that way of thinking in terms of algorithms like decision trees. So, and they would be very well prepared before the exam about what to ask, what to look for when they are looking to a patient. However, after the exam and after they picked a specialty, they would be allocated to a specific hospital 
and the reality in the hospitals and in the emergency units will be totally different from what they were studying in theory before. And this was this brought to us a question. So how can we fill this gap that goes from what is like the ideal situation, the theoretical situation of decision to the real field uh, reality, yeah, to the field reality. So we approached one hospital, uh, it was Hospital de São João, it's one of the biggest hospitals in Portugal and during the pandemic it showed to be one of the most innovative ones and we, we asked them, so uh, would this be would would it be useful to have a tool that would allow medical doctors in the emergency units for example to actually convert these uh, guidelines international guidelines theoretical principles into um actually uh real life and activate uh, activatable uh, knowledge would it be useful and uh, the feedback we had was very very interesting was very very enthusiastic so we decided to develop um, a tool and uh, this tool what would be like uh, software as a service and would be like a digital medical assistant that would remind every doctor in the emergency unit about what to ask and what not to forget and would help them rem reminding about, for example, the, the, the phone number of the, the dermatology uh, specialist on call. Because I'm, I believe that no one is, uh, uh, not that everyone is aware of this, but medical doctors, and starting with the most junior ones, spend a lot of time looking for numbers and for contacts and trying to learn how can I actually reference this patient to that consultation of the speciality and time is money time is life time is quality of life try time is prognostics for patients so yeah um this um actually digital medical assistant uh, aims to make medical doctors time more efficient because Medical doctors will, in our opinion, shall not spend as much time as they are spending doing like this kind of stuff, like looking for information, looking for a phone number, looking for the evidence, because the phone number of that specific hospital or of that specific specialist on call in the emergency unit is not in the guidelines from the uh, international um, uh, scientific uh, organizations. They are not there. So that is the kind of thing we wanted to actually provide hospitals and this would make the use of medical doctors and the human resources more efficient so dioscope as a service uh, is a virtual doctor i prefer to call it like a doctor assistant because it don't want to replace the medical doctor you only want to make sure the medical doctors don't forget to ask the essential stuff because let's be totally transparent here and I'm a medical doctor speaking here also so medical doctors have a limited memory capacity so it's very easy for them to forget something because they are human so why not to use digital platforms to actually make sure they don't forget of course they will be the ones deciding the ones asking the ones having contact with the patient but at least it, they will have an, a system reminding them, don't forget to ask this, don't forget to ask that. Or if you need to, um, to clarify this, like, uh, this diagnostics question, you must ask for this specific exam and you must call this specific number with, uh, of the colleague on call. So yeah, we created like Dioscope as a service uh, in this context. We started with Hospital São João, always developing a solution with hospitals from the, the Portuguese National Health Service. Um, and what was new in this solution? Because you have a lot of like digital or clinical support systems, um, clinical support decision systems, 
and digital doctors and artificial intelligence. So what, what are we bringing new to the market? Actually, we believe that the problem before we get to artificial intelligence where doctors will be uh, in a different position uh, in uh, regarding like their contact with patients, before that, there are most and a lot of basic things that need, needs, need to be addressed before, like filling this gap from the international guidelines to the local realities. So what do we want to, to do differently? We don't want to be like most of decision support systems that are preset, like uh, with no customization and that are very expensive if they want to be like applicable uh, to a local reality. We want to be like a no code, very low cost um, platform that will actually allow hospitals to build and shape their own algorithms, their own decision algorithms. Uh, because evidence is not the same thing of knowledge. Okay, and we want to bring this evidence, international evidence, the best scientific evidence that is available in platforms like UpToDate, into a, uh, activatable uh, and actually customized solutions for us, uh, hospitals that are actually useful, really useful for medical doctors. So this was what we started doing like several months ago, and this is our team. Uh, I am very proud to say that this was a solution thought and prepared by medical doctors to medical doctors because we have Stumas, our CEO, is a medical doctor. I'm a medical doctor. Marta Jonet, our chief medical officer, is a medical doctor. She is in the, the field because she um, is a team leader from one of the biggest uh, emergency units in Portugal in a public hospital. And then we... Uh, uh, we also have uh, a CTO. He is not a medical doctor because that would be like uh, more um, uh, harder to, to get. But Miguel Afayat is, uh, has been helping us developing like all the technological uh, part of our solution. So starting like several months ago with this new branch of the company dioscope has a company uh, as a service we are already in several different hospitals in portugal with signed contracts these are only the ones we are already like contracts uh, established but i would say that the number of hospitals with who we are actually discussing and finalizing contracts is like double this one, it doubles this one. So we, right now we are already working with like 65% of the public health institutions of the Portuguese NHS at the moment. And we plan to be present in all the NHS hospitals until the end of the year. Uh, we are now in a, uh, a situation where we are trying to prove our value concept. So um, our, our strategy is first to go in a free uh, version of our solution and meet the needs of the public hospitals, having like a big sample and the insights of uh, thousands of medical doctors and health experts. And uh, we plan to have like evidence on how how deep our solution goes in terms of um, optimizing efficiency in uh, uh, emergency units, like avoiding um, avoiding waste in terms of um, uh, medical examinations that s sometimes are are not do, do not are not prescribed according to what is really needed because we also have added one other challenge in the Portuguese hospitals uh, reality and uh, uh, emergency units reality that are the medical doctors that are not affiliated to one single emergency unit because they work in different ones. So it's very hard for them to change their their ship, uh, ship uh, as we like to, to say in Portugal, change their ship every time that they change hospital. So they end up being very 
defensive and practicing what we like to call a very defensive uh, medicine. So they over prescribe. So what do we want to to actually to address with our solution is uh, uh, also that problem of over prescription of medical exams. So we want to be able to provide these medical doctors that are jumping from one emergency unit to the other with the, all the knowledge like centralized in one single tool that will tell them if I am in this hospital, this is exactly what the director of the cardiology service of this hospital decided I have to ask in that specific situation. Of course, this will be always a reminder, always a su suggestion, because our software don't want to replace medical doctors at the moment. It wants to make them much more efficient and to fight medical errors. And I think that's it by now. Thank you very much. Amazing, Francisco. And you have an, an expressive growth of a very fast to, to reach the other hospitals. It shows that you'll, you'll pinpoint the right uh, pain point for the, the doctors. And it's, it's good that, because you, you also provide like a better uh, quality for work for the, the doctors because they don't have to have all this weight of memory things to, to ask. They can yeah. rely on a, on a system. And actually, when we approached the hospitals first time, we, are, we were not expecting such an enthusiastic uh, uh, reaction uh, because, in fact, they already have all the knowledge. Like all these algorithms and these protocols for decision for each specific uh, disease, for example, they are already in place, but they are printed in PDFs that are not accessible for the ones who need them, that are the ones that are in the emergency units. So, and they don't have time to be looking for a PDF um, between hundreds of thousands of other ones in order to be able to know what to ask. It must be something much more easy to do. So, and that was our decision. And this was a decision that was uh, actually reached uh, in collaboration with our consumers, the hospitals and the medical doctors. So this will be like something a uh, button that will be like in a desktop of the emergency unit uh, computers uh, that it will not be totally integrated with patients' clinical data because we didn't want to do that at this time because that would raise a lot of like confidentiality and that's uh, data and that's uh, and other challenges. We didn't want to have them at this moment, so we only wanted to have like some place where the medical doctor can click and know what to ask. Don't need to be feeding on data, sensitive data at this moment, because first we want to have a foot on the door with the hospitals. Then we can get there and we can get to artificial intelligence when we solve this very basic problem that is making the best evidence activatable for medical doctors in the field. And this is not happening right now because what is the use or the utility of having, okay, I, have, I know what is the best guideline for the approach of uh, heart stroke made or developed by the American Heart Association. But it assumes that we are in the best top-notch hospital in New York, but we are not. Mm -hmm. What if I'm in a, a primary care unit? What is the utility of that? So what we want to do is to break that very good quality evidence into something that is useful, actually useful and activatable for the field medical doctor. Amazing, amazing, excellent. Uh, I don't know if for any of the attendees, if you want to make a question, you can raise your hand and I let you talk. Do you have any questions for Francisco? And if Ricardo, if you have any questions also, feel free to, to, to ask us if I think it's- Hi Ricardo, a... very nice to meet you. Hi Francisco, nice to see you, thank you. Well, I don't have any questions, thank you very much.
Okay. Well, I have to say that it's an amazing job you have done. This is really something very useful, I think, for them. Yeah. yeah this is a very short time, yes. And you, know, you use a strategic approach of you using no code because it's flexible, it's not uh, <coughs> a burden to yeah. adapt. That was something we also thought about because in my previous career path, I was a deputy to, to the Portuguese Secretary of State, Health Secretary of State. And I, I found something very interesting when I was at the government. That was, in the past, uh, hospitals, in some, in some time in the past, hospitals were given the, the autonomy to pick their own uh, clinical support systems. Uh, and when they would, they would ask guidance to the Minister of Health, the Minister of Health would tell them, no, you decide, no guidance, up to you. And what happened was that there was a multiplicity of different systems working over the National Health Service, and everything was very easy in the beginning. Very cheap, very competitive, so don't worry, we will make it. And then, some years later, any change any update, any uh, correction would have to be asked to the, the, the company, would be very expensive and very hard to do. So we wanted to be totally opposite. So our solution, we wanted to make it the less dependent on the central institution, on Dioscope, the possible. So we made it in a way that any medical doctor that doesn't know how to code is able actually to update and to edit the protocols in real time, only with a access, access key, key. So they don't need to wait for us. They don't need to ask for us for permission. They may, may ask Dioscope for support. That's okay. But they are not our, they are, they don't depend on us only. And that was uh, one thing that we really want to make sure that is we would make hospitals as autonomous as possible. And we would like, we tend to be like a platform more than a content creation uh, service. We are not a content cre creation service. We are a platform where the content created by the hospitals themselves that is already there is stored. Great, great, excellent. Well, I know that you have a, a meeting very soon. So um, thank you for, for participating, Francisco. It was uh, very good to know the history of Dioscope and I think you are providing uh, important value for the, the healthcare workers. I wish you all the success. Uh, very much it was a pleasure and always count on us every time you need because these kind of initiatives we believe are very important so thank you very much thank you francisco nice to meet you too and now we continue with ricardo mora from Wise. ricardo feel free to take the, the stage for you and present thank you very Rick much Weiss. thank you very much rafael and uh, well, I'll, I'll begin by sharing, sharing my, my presentation, if I may. So, well, I'm um, Ricard Moura. I am the, the CEO of, uh, of Gripwise. And um, I, I don't know if you are seeing it well. Yes, it's so. ready. It's working. Okay. So, well, thank you very much for, for having me, firstly, and uh, uh, I would just like to share with you what was our journey until now. Uh, my name is Ricardo, as I said, I'm the CEO of Gripwise, and we are uh, looking for helping people to stay healthy through the professionals, obviously. And um, we began this by looking at the assessment of physical frailty, which is extremely important, important in the maintenance of health and quality of life of the elderly population, which are the ones that we are talking about in, in, in this uh, matchmaking program also. So frailty is defined as an aging-related syndrome of physical, physiological decline. 
And uh, it's a condition that carries high risks for inflammations, loss of autonomy, or even death. So, and this is really um, a big problem. To, to give you a notion of the size, considering the European cases alone, 60% of the elderly above 65 suffer of some kind of frailty. And the costs for the new healthcare systems in additional medicines and care are above 8, 81 billion euros a year, based on the studies that are uh, available. And the problem is that the assessment is time consuming and needs specialized professionals. However, this question uh, can be uh, frailty and, uh, and sarcopenia, if identified in an early stage, is possible to be treated and even reversed with uh, adapted physical activity and nutrition. So what we thought about was how can we help to, to mitigate the evolution of sarcopenia and um, frailty in a time when it was uh, also a problem to, to, to the community because GRIPWISE was created uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, in April 2020. And as you may remember, one of the, uh, in the COVID pandemic, the beginning was related to, to how to protect the, the most vulnerable people. So what we thought about is the concept of, about frailty as a concept of looking at vulnerable people. So this was a way to create based on science to create a, 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 a solution to help to find the most vulnerable and act uh, to protect, protect those people. So in that sense, what we created the, was a solution that combines a smart load cell and a software platform that can access frailty in a simple, fast and quantified way. With GRIPWISE, it's possible to make this important assessment by less skilled professionals with a simple training and near the elderly population, uh, population simplifying the whole process. For example, we see this solution be easily applied on elderly care homes and uh, in, the, in the near future also in pharmacies because it's not so complex to do. For example, we see uh, uh, we want to give people the tools to understand their own condition and uh, change their own behavior in order to mitigate the evolution of frailty, keeping their own quality of life and at the end also reducing costs. And um, to make the assessment of frailty, to, to give you a, a notion, mo most of the audience may know about this, but uh, I would like to, to share this uh, additionally. So uh, the, the frailty criteria assessment uh, is made with our solution now with the, with the Fried phenotype, which follows the five criteria, uh, which is an intentional loss of weight. So if you lose more than 5% of, of your weight from one year to the other without intention, uh, the slow gait speed, the hand grip strength, and the, the um, identify the, the levels of exhaustion and reduced, uh, reduced physical activity in terms of calorie, calorie expenditure. So when we look at the, at the, at the landscape of the, the solutions provided by the market, we saw that for the assessment of sarcopenia oh, and the, uh, for the assessment of frailty, the traditional basics for the assessment, you need always to have a hand grip. But those, even the connected ones, uh, always rely on the, on the capabilities of the, the highly skilled professionals that are needed to make the assessment. So what we, what we think we, we have created is a solution that combines the full pack of a, a simple workflow and uh, the connectivity with the cloud platform, which simplifies the whole process, reducing the, the level of skills needed for this assessment. And the fact that can be assessed at distance uh, simplifies the, the, the screening of those population, of those, of those people uh, through time. So having a preventive uh, way to manage it. As we see also, not only in the hardware space, we also see in the software space, we saw that, for example, there are several apps for making, making this kind of assessment. However, they are not linked to hardware usually, and they don't have the, the, the screening uh, prof, uh, availability in the future. And we created, uh, created also a GPDR compliant 
cloud platform that helps to to keep uh, all the privacy of the data having two backends one of them with um, with the private information regarding the person which has the name uh, their address all of the information that can be useful uh, to identify this person and on the other way we have another backend in another country in which we have the information regarding the clinical information of that person so if we have we are attacked now that we are in this in this uh, climate of of uh, uh, hacking and things like that so we all, always have the information uh, um secure so we, it's very difficult to have been breached uh, have breaches in, in both backends and one of them if you have one of them you don't know uh, what is the information linked to that one only through our platform but it's not over so what we have created was a solution that combines the assessment of of strength in compression but also interaction, which is opening. So, uh, and uh, additionally, the solution itself, it's electronic and gathers 100,000, 100 measurements per second of the, the strength that it's been done, which gives us a new, uh, uh, also uh, a profile of the, the muscle strength that it's been done. In addition, we added, uh, we added, um, different types of we are adding different types of accessories to make the assessment of different muscular groups so as you can see there with different stripes and the accessories you can make the assessment of strength for example in uh, in opening for the arms for the legs now as you can see on the on the lower part in the middle you can see a new accessory that we are developing for the assessment of of muscle strength of a uh, um, of the legs, for example, the abductors uh, uh, muscles, which is really important to, to keep up uh, understanding how is evolving the, the strength on the, on the legs because of, of the falls. It's one of the most important areas in which you can prevent falls. But in, the, in addition to that, the device itself has already embedded uh, an accelerometer and gyroscope which opens completely uh, the technology to other uses like gamified assessment of uh, or through um, through our platform uh, assessment of muscle strength and also exercise games which is something that can be quantified so in that sense you can always motivate people to keep their their strength in the middle term and uh, since you, we are talking about frailty, the way to mitigate the evolution of frailty is based on physical activity, personalized physical activity and personalized nutrition. We are also uh, supporting people through the game, gamified process to, to have their own physical activity based on quantified uh, exercises. So you, when you are making your own exercise, you are, no, you are doing it to keep your muscle strength quantity and quality of the muscle strength. And additionally, our platform is completely open to add other technologies like, for example, our own technology uh, uh, previously created, which is LipoWise for the assessment of sarcopenia in which we can assess the quantity of the muscle mass, which is so important for the assessment of sarcopenia and the link with the foreign uh, third party technologies like bioimpedance scales or even the traditional wristbands for the assessment of physical activity activity which we are going to combine in our platform to to help the motivation of the persons uh, through time so we are not closing ourselves into our own technology we can include technology from uh, third parties and uh, engage with the motivational uh, part and uh, the solution is now going to market. So we are now launching it uh, here in Portugal and we are looking for partners uh, in other places also. And um, for now, we are looking for the solution as a, a hardware and software. It's a platform as a service. So what we want to do is uh, deliver the devices and the, and the cloud platform for being assessed by the professionals and entities. And uh, giving support on the back uh, on the back end on, on from our side also in the nutritional and physical physical activity parts 
We see this solution firstly being applied, for example, in the elderly care homes that we are now uh, uh, trying to, to re uh, reach with, uh, with the campaign that we won a prize last year from um, Lidl, uh, a program it's called Mais Ajuda, and we are now uh, making a, a radio campaign in um, Renaissance and also in uh, RFM in Portugal. And um, we are now looking for the elderly care homes in which we are obviously needing to, to uh, explain what is felt and sarcopenia and how can we help to, to tackle that, those problems. And additionally, we see the evolution through time into big areas. One of them is the reduction, a reduction of the, the age of the, the, the assessed person. So firstly, we want to introduce the decrease, the, the, the difficulty to make the assessment uh, going through the pharmacies, for example. So uh, having this first assessment at the pharmacies, which is a, a place where elderly as well as young people go frequently and they 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 know that and it's, it only takes five minutes so it's possible to have a professional over there making the assessment of frailty or sarcopenia and after that having um, a knowledge about how to change behavior and mitigate the evolution of frailty and as a, a, as it was possible to see previously as we can adapt different accessories to the same to, to the same basic technology, we see that in the future we can also provide solutions in a physical physiotherapy um, to to help to to make the assessment of uh, and the training of physiotherapy at distance uh, supported in a quantified way and by uh, health professionals. So we are we are a spin-off of the University, University of Porto, and this technology has in, already been validated as a prototype in the Porto for Aging program, among others, and allowed to publish 12 academic articles and several theses uh, in masters and, and PhD theses. And um, the prototype also won the Portuguese Fresenio Scavi first place award in clinical nutrition in 2014. And um, international patents have already been granted in US and Europe. In, in US, it was in, 20, in the final, uh, in the end of 2020. In, the, in the Europe, we just uh, selected the countries in which we are going to have the patent uh, ongoing. And um, we have already validated the grip wise against uh, uh, the gold standard, uh, which is JAMA, the traditional hand grip. And uh, we made it in a, in a big uh, university hospital in the north of, of France, the Caen uh, University Hospital, with 348 cancer patients. And we have already certified the solution as a class one medical device, and the company has already obtained also the ISO 13485 as a medical, produ uh, medical devices uh, producer. So how it worked. So what happened was in, in 2020, in the beginning of the pandemic, so in April, we saw the opportunity to try to, to try to, to put this solution in the market to, to make the evaluation of, of the vulnerability of the elderly. So at that time we won um, some uh, some prizes, um, some projects with with a uh, uh, with uh, um, elderly care homes, and after that we won several prizes in uh, in uh, Portugal, like uh, uh, Santa Casa Challenge. We were finalists in Santa Casa Challenge and Altis IoT Challenge also, and we won a prize from the Portuguese government uh, for the R and D development of the technology. So based on that, we also uh, achieved more than 600,000 euros in investment uh, in global uh, based on the grant and, uh, and um, the funding from business angels. Um, in the one year ago at the Aging Fit uh, Fair in France, we were considered as the most innovative project among others. And um, we were also selected for the Bridgehead program uh, which is it came from IIT Health now to to reach uh, US market uh, in this year. 
Uh, also with VR EIT Health, we were selected for the Startup Meets Pharma in which Abbott uh, lo was looking for tools for monitoring loss of muscle strength and or physical function to manage sarcopenia and frailty in the elderly. So this is an information which is really important. And we were also uh, selected for the first cohort of the Gatekeeper program, which is going to be a big pilot in Europe that uh, intends to integrate data from uh, several devices and we were se selected in the first cohort in the future uh, this good uh, big pilot is going to have 40,000 patients all over Europe and additionally we were also selected by the by the uh, uh, National Agency of Innovation as one of the born from knowledge companies and we have achieved also the um, the R and D um, R and D certification as a um, company that develops R and D, uh, being able to to be uh, supported by funding that is uh, based on on uh, fiscal benefits in Portugal. So as I previously said, we are now launching a campaign. This is the the Portuguese uh, flyer that we sent to the elderly care homes. Uh, this campaign is based on what, uh, explaining what is sarcopenia, what is frailty, and what is our solution to help um, to help achieve uh, the benefits from the previous uh, assessment of the, 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 those conditions. And um, we only could do what we did until now uh, with this great team. So I, I am the, the manager and uh, have more than 20 years of experience in management. But uh, Tiago, he is the CTO and, um, and uh, one of the co-inventors of the technology at the University of Porto. And we were also, uh, we also have in our team a, a PhD um, clinical nutritionist, and also Angela Faria, she is also a dietitian. And uh, we also have in our team, Katarina Lima, she's the, in the quality control and of the, of the, the, the compliance regarding uh, uh, the production of the medical devices and also the, the certification. And also uh, we have a journey for the cloud platform, but we also came from the university. So we have many advisors from the university and those are some uh, only the, some of the major ones. We have obviously the professor Teresa Amaral. She was one of the, the ones that uh, came from the faculty of nutrition of the University of Porto that asked for the development of this tool uh, to the faculty of engineering, which was uh, Professor Teresa Restivo and Tiago was on the was on that laboratory to develop the tools, and we also count on the Carolina Villacha from the Polytechnic of Guarda. She has more than 300 elderly patients to uh, be tested without solutions. We also have we are counting with uh, with Professor Eduardo Teixeira. A researcher in sedentary behavior and also in the sports vertical, Rui Gargante from the Faculty of Sports of the University of Porto. Our first investor is Luis Lopes Pereira. He is the country manager of Medtronic Portugal and he is one of our main business advisors and we were one of his first investments in startups in Portugal also. So I would like to share with you uh, a small video that uh, try to to uh, wrap up the the what I just said and what is our solution in a more visual way. So. Muscle strength is one of the indicators most associated with health promotion and well-being. It is also an important parameter related to the quality of life and the prevention of chronic diseases during aging. The decrease of this strength throughout life, despite being natural, can lead to a disease called sarcopenia, which is usually associated with the frailty syndrome. These conditions are very prevalent and problematic, especially in people of advanced age. People with frailty have greater difficulties in carrying out activities of daily living and in maintaining balance and agility. Their walk becomes more unstable and this increases the risk of falling and bone fracture. The current pandemic has further increased the risk of developing these events and it is very important to continually assess 
know and monitor the physical condition of the elderly. It is estimated that in Europe, 60% of people at least 65 years old suffer from some level of frailty and 25% from sarcopenia. More than 70% of this age group will suffer from sarcopenia by 2045. Several clinical trials have shown that physical exercise is effective not only to prevent the onset, but also to reduce the progression of frailty and sarcopenia in the elderly. Hi, my name is Daniel and I would like to introduce you to Gripwise, a project that puts science and technological innovation at the service of the population. Gripwise is a patented dynamometer consisting of an intelligent load cell. When combined with other accessories, this device makes it possible to assess and monitor the strength of different muscle groups. Because it is lighter and smaller than other existing solutions, this device is easily handled by frail people. But how does Gripwise work? This smart device allows you to collect tensile and compression strength data. Gripwise communicates via Bluetooth with mobile devices, both iOS and Android, which in turn aggregate this and other data to be transferred to a cloud platform. With Gripwise, it is possible in less than five minutes to assess the level of frailty in the elderly according to Freed's phenotype. Through a simple and fluid workflow, this process can be performed by less qualified professionals. In addition, data can be collected on a cloud platform where the strength data and the strength profile of Gripwise users are analyzed automatically. Health professionals can assess the information and Using validated scientific processes, it is possible to diagnose people with sarcopenia. With this, health professionals are able to be faster, more effective, and they are ready to remotely monitor people in vulnerable situations more accurately. For these cases, professionals can prescribe personalized follow-up programs with physical exercise and nutrition where the use of Gripwise is essential. Gripwise is a unique project because the evaluation of muscle strength is done remotely and by any health professional. Money and time expenditures are reduced as the user does not need to travel to the hospital or health clinic. With the anticipation of diagnosis of frailty, the health professional can also recommend and monitor personalized nutrition and physical activity programs for the most vulnerable. These programs can maintain for a longer period of time the strength and quality of life of the elderly. Our priority is to get this solution to people who live in nursing homes or who have home care. And how can we enhance the use of Gripwise? The articulation of this solution with gamification techniques can increase the user's motivation, their training and their involvement. And in the context of health, the so-called exergames promote the user's movement and have produced frankly encouraging results. It was thinking about the need for an immersive and movement-based experience that the video game Living in the Countryside was created. Through an emotional narrative and an attractive design, the user embarks on the adventure of having to maintain a rural farm. Painting fences or feeding the chickens are all part of the daily activities of this farm. And all of these tasks are carried out with the support of Gripwise. In the activity we see in the image, Alice uses the hand grip to milk a cow. To complete this task, the user has to fill several buckets of milk using one hand at a time. With this and other tasks, Alice fulfills her daily plan for muscle strengthening in a simple and fun way. The game was designed to be adjusted to the physical condition of users, since each task is calibrated using the maximum strength of the user at that moment. 
The game receives feedback on the effort required to complete each task. And on a daily basis, it also allows the user to record pain, adjusting exercise plans so that muscle groups in pain are requested with less intensity or less used. The data collected by users' mobile devices can be consulted remotely by health professionals. This allows permanent monitoring and evaluation of the quantity and quality of exercise or physical activity performed. These professionals will also be able to adjust the physical exercise and rehabilitation programs, defining the number of sets and daily repetitions that the user must do with Gripwise. These plans will then be automatically incorporated into the video game. The project has been developed to be a powerful tool to monitor the evolution of COVID-19 patients, allowing an assessment of their physical condition while confined. Our solution is also ready to be used in different age groups and occupations, as well as in the recovery of various diseases. We are at the forefront of quality of life. Join us. Grip wise. Get a grip. Be wise. So I hope you liked it. Um, well, obviously, in the end of this process, I would like to, to share with you what we are willing to do in the next stages. So what we are looking for in this matchmaking process is also uh, finding some commercial partners, obviously, someone to, to take our solution to market and also trying to find European project partners or even uh, outside of Europe. So uh, I'm completely open to your, to your questions and um, please, uh, if you need anything else, <laughs> just, just say thank you very much. Ricardo, amazing presentation and you're doing a great job. Uh, when did you start with the, the project? Because the, with all these achievements, it, it, it cert certainly has been a, a long road, right? Uh, yes, obviously, we, we cannot detach uh, the, the beginning of the project from what was previ previously developed at the university, obviously. But uh, the, the, the beginning of the company was in uh, April 2020. Uh, after we, we previously developed, the, I'm going to show you the, the technology itself, so how it is. Uh, we previously developed another technology at the time. So this is the, the solution that we are now uh, providing and uh, obviously the software. And at that time, uh, we were uh, developing another technology, which is this one, LipoWise, the assessment of uh, body composition uh, with the mm -hmm. traditional skin fold calico. What happened was at that time we were we were selected for an accelerator in Qatar, and from one moment to the other in March 2020 came COVID, so we didn't have anything to to work on uh, after that. Uh, but that we had uh, the two technologies in our portfolio, so the first uh, approach to market was based on that project in the beginning of April when we showed a solution that would be this one. So this is the load cell that we created at that time for the assessment of uh, frailty. As you can see now, it's a more robust product uh, mm -hmm. with much more development. It, it has uh, some, some parts that can be detached and we can apply different accessories for the assessment of different muscular groups. And all the cloud platform, GDPR compliant, uh, the apps in iOS and Android at that time was only, um, only in, uh, Android and it was really really interesting to to have the um, all the, this process. Uh, so this all came and get more moving after we had this uh, first pilots and afterwards it it went really really fast. Okay. We have a question here from Magda Rosenbaum. Uh, she asked how the muscle strength, how grip wise help muscle strength in the legs because it's very important for, for prevention. I can show here uh, one of our accessories that uh, I was I was sharing during the presentation, I think. 
but uh, as you can see here on on the center on the on the uh, uh, on on the <laughs> downside of the presentation, you have in there uh, what is our our first uh, uh, assessment of the um, our first assessment for for the assessment of muscle strength in the abductors uh, muscles. This is um, we can so we have stripes that go uh, around the, the, legs. the legs. So you can manage to, to understand the strength you do in compression, but also in traction when you are opening the, the legs. And this is going to be quantified, as I, I said. So we gather 100 measurements per second, which can allow us to understand the maximum strength. So the, so the, the, the power, the, 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 all the, the potence you have, and afterwards, the resistance through time, how much time you can, uh, you can keep that strength uh, uh, and compare it in different times. So you can make this assessment in, in one time. Afterwards, with the gamification process, you can understand the evolution of the strength in terms of resistance and potence uh, through time, the quality of the muscle. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Magda, also for the question. Yeah. For profession, yeah, yeah, that's 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 our interest. So obviously, we are on the beginning of this process. But the big thing about this is that we quantify. So we can quantify, we can manage, and that's the big thing about this. So we are looking for for help from. Look forward to see you continue to do so. Thanks, thanks, yes. Carolina. Thank Hope you very much. With wise, rich feelings and. <laughs> Yes, yes, and we are hoping to have someone to, that help us to go there. So, if you are willing to have a meeting, <laughs> I would like to to have meetings with all of you. So, I have uh, uh, I'm completely open um, to 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 do the matchmaking afterwards. Okay, so thank you we very are much for the time. So, thank you, Ricardo, for accepting the invitation for participating, thank and you. congratulations on your product and your achievements. I wish you the best of luck, thank and hope to much. see you in the future. Thank you very much. It was Thanks. a real pleasure. Thank you for having me here. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. You. Bye. Powering the innovation for active and healthy aging.